Let's begin with the Middle East Respiratory Treatment or MERS situation here in Korea. For the details, we go straight to our Kim Ji-yeon, who joins us at the news center. ji can you fill us in on the latest? Well, Daniel, just a few hours ago, the Director General of the World Health Organization, Margaret Chan, held a news conference in Seoul at the start of her three-day visit to the country. During the event, she gave her assessment of the MERS situation in Korea. Take a look. Our current assessment of the MERS situation in this country is the government is now on a very good footing. The response of the health authority has been exemplary. Well, you may say that at the beginning it was a slow start, but that slow start was followed by world-class epidemiological detective work. The country's highly developed IT capabilities allow real-time tracking of spread and reporting of findings. The response in this country has been strengthened very quickly, systematically, and very significantly. And I can say, very few other countries in the world can do this. Well, she did say the response has been exemplary. That's certainly very encouraging, ji uh, But of course, what the world and Korea would like to know is when we will be able to declare Korea MERS-free. Well, Daniel, local experts say that it normally takes 28 days with no new cases after the last patient, which is the same standard used by the WHO in the case of Ebola. But what's disturbing now is the rising number of MERS cases in Korea among medical workers. At least two medical workers from Samsung Medical Center in southern Seoul have tested positive for MERS. And it's disturbing because not only are they exposed to the deadly virus, but they could be the ones spreading it because they see so many patients. The health ministry say the two medical workers contracted the virus due to a lack of adequate protective equipment and health authorities currently advise medical workers who are t treating MERS patients to wear level D protective clothing which requires coveralls and chemical resistant boots while gloves, safety glasses, escape masks and face shields are optional. You can see the comparison there with level C protective clothing which is the government which the government provided for for medical workers to fight Ebola in Africa. And we've since learned that the medical workers at the Samsung Medical Center were given level D protective equipment on Wednesday, a couple weeks after the first outbreak. The ministry's MERS headquarters says that going forward, it will require all medical workers at the hospital to be tested to prevent new infections. Well, we all have to be vigilant in this trying time, particularly those that are showing symptoms of the MERS virus. What should they be doing, Jian? Well, they obviously should be following protocol to help contain the virus, and they should understand that their actions can really have serious consequences at this critical stage in the outbreak. And the case in point, patient 141 is believed to have contracted the virus after taking his father to Samsung Medical Center late last month. He tested positive for MERS on the 13th, five days after returning from a trip to the southernmost island of Jeju from June 5th to the 8th with eight other people, including his wife and son. The 42-year-old said he spent a lot of time in his car during the trip because he felt sick. And health authorities have tracked down at least 34 people who may have been in contact with the man and have taken steps to disinfect the hotel where he stayed. And in addition, he was sitting in business class on Korean Air flight KE-1. 223 on June 5th, 14 passengers and eight airplane personnel have already been placed in isolation at their homes, and more could be as well pending further investigation by the authorities. Back to you, Daniel.